All right, so up until this point, we were creating a little bit of content. And remember, like I said, you want to create some content to entice people to follow you. In the beginning, five posts, but you can see you can quickly get further than that, and that's fine. You could post, you know, 12 things, that's fine. You can add a bunch of stuff to different collections, that might be pretty effective. You can add stuff simply to your home, you know, your profile, you can add content. What we will do instead, the best tip that I can give you for Google+, Plus, which works, because this is what I said previously, that if I post the exact same thing, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Plus, I get more results from Google+, Plus in the way I'm about to show you. And that way is right here, communities. Communities are very similar to collections. Collections are basically the content of one person. One person created Moscow Views. One person created Timelessness of Myanmar. One person created these things, and then people can follow. Communities are many people creating and sharing on a variety of topics. You go to communities, these are like the classic bulletin boards or discussion boards that you might have seen. So I'm seeing here travel. It says 43,000 members. Nature has 589,000 members. Travel blogging, 38,000. So this is basically people congregating around a topic. Half a million people congregating around nature. Before clicking join on any of these, you should click the thumbnail to view what it's a, what it what is it about. It's recommending recipe of the day, and that's the closest one to my company, which is a food company. So I'm gonna oh actually some of them say ask to join. I'll explain what that is. Some of them say join and some of them say ask to join. Just click on any one of these that has the thumbnail. Social media professionals. I'm just gonna go with whatever. Social media professionals. Now I'm going to see posts. David Oates posted this. Big Digital Media posted that. Ben Rawson posted this. So people are posting stuff. And there's some activity. Here's some plus ones. Here's some shares, comments. Okay, people are, you know, commenting. People are being active, being social on social media. Many people congregating around this topic, social media professionals. 71,000. Okay, well, who cares? This is why you want to care. Once you join, and if it's a simple join, it will let you into the community where then now you can post to that community, where you can post and direct your post to 71,000 people. I have no followers, but I join the community and I have 71,000 followers instantly, kind of. I have a way to me, for me to show my post now to 71,000 people that care about social media, to read my latest blog post about how, what's hot on social media. So now I get that little pencil, I'm going to post, and it says you're going to post this to the social media professionals community. Picture, link, text. Be careful, don't start to post yet, because there's some caveats here. Let's first join a couple communities, so I'll go back to communities. It's recommending them, but I'm not finding exactly what I'm looking for. I can do search. If I search at the top again, cookies, this time I'll say show me communities about cookies. So before posting anything, because I need to warn you, you want to join a couple. I'm going to go to more communities. Is there a nomenclature for these posts? Or are they just called posts? Posts, pretty much. Messages sometimes, but posts. You know, on Twitter, they're specifically tweets, but they're still posts. And on Facebook, they're posts. Here, there are posts also. Content. These that say ask to join someone is going to approve you. The thing about Google Plus communities is that they're basically hosted 
on Google+, but they're not managed or endorsed or controlled by Google+. As long as they don't violate the basic terms of service of Google+, which is like, you know, no hate speech, no violence, you know, no extreme whatever, as long as those rules aren't being uh, violated, these communities can exist. And these communities are moderated by people. One person created it and might have given more people managerial access. We can check who manages it on another screen here. But what I'm saying is, John Smith created food, cookeronies, and cookie cat community. And he currently has six members, and you have to ask to join it. Then John Smith will check your profile, see who you are, what you've posted, and are you worthy enough to join this community. If you are, then you're, you're going to go you're gonna go in, and you'll be able to post to this community. This one over here, with 1,300 members, Kate Divas, it's just anyone can join. So anyone can join. Those that have asked to join, 289 unique cookie lovers. I want to be the 290th member, but I have to ask to join. So I'll give it a shot. I don't know if they'll let me, but they're going to check my account. They're going to check my biography. They're going to check what I post, and obviously my account is fake, so they probably won't allow me. But for yourself, you look here and join communities because as we'll see more deeper in a moment, much deeper in a moment, we'll see, again, more of the value of this. We're joining communities that have a built-in audience, but there's still nuances I have to explain. Um, and what I'll say is, try to join communities with at least 1,000 members. Are you going to be very viable in a community with 300 members? Are you going to be viable in a community of 600 members? More members could be could mean more people that are really active and interested in what you're posting that doesn't always hold however let's say cookie clicker I click on that one it's only got 300 it doesn't meet reach my 1000 limit but there could be a lot of activity these could be 300 really passionate people and I can tell that by how many comments plus ones and shares the opposite could also be true. I could join a community of 10,000, but no one is paying attention. No one is plus one in their comment. Everyone's just spamming. Everyone's just joining this community, posting their stuff, and no, no interaction. So the opposite is true. Try to join communities of 1,000, because usually that's starting to be a critical mass of people. Check the community to see if there's activity. Just browse it plus one, plus one, a comment, plus one, plus one, plus one. It's on the low side of commenting and such. It's not a lot of activity. I might not want to join it. Maybe that search term was too generic. Maybe it's simply cooking. Let's see, under cooking keyword, there we go, 255,000. That's in my limit. Health and nutrition, 16,000. Families cooking with kids, 20,000. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scope out a community first. I'm going to click the icon rather than join right away. I'm going to check out the community. So people are posting, of course. I'm seeing plus two, plus three, plus two, comment, plus one, plus one, plus four, plus one. For having 201,000 members, it's not a huge amount of activity that is follow-up activity. People are posting a lot. She posted something, Daisy posted something, Dave, everyone's posting something. But are the people active? Are people paying attention and replying and sharing? Maybe. I'll join them, sure. Question? Mm -hmm. so are you browsing for communities that you believe may participate in your cause, maybe purchase your products? Exactly. Communities that would care. I'm going to search for communities and participating communities that I would get a result out of. You know, we want to use all of this stuff selfishly. We want to get follows, we want to get likes, we want to get shares and sales. So, yeah, we don't want to be a spammer, though, because one of the things about communities is you always read the rules. There's going to be rules somewhere. Read the rules. And don't break the rules. Questions? Yeah, you're saying like a thousand members is a good base point.
point for something that needs to start looking at more seriously. What is the amount of interaction that would be a good base point to start? That's a little harder to say, but you will look at a community and you will see, you know, plus five, plus three, plus twenty, plus five hundred. If they're if they're all getting like nothing, like one and two, then there's not really a lot of interaction. You want to look at those numbers before below the posts. And the more of those that have higher numbers, whatever higher means, the better. You know, all of these are having one and two and three. I'm not really seeing that one's got five. I'm not seeing like some of these other ones where I might see two hundred or 70. It's going to depend on the community. And so what I would say about rules is I join the families in cooking. Little description, sharing smartphone ways for families to shop, cook, and eat at a rainbow of whole foods together. Okay, if my business is about that, I should post. If my business is a hardware business, probably don't want to post there. Not related. You want to go deeper though. You want to look at the info about the community. On Google Plus 1.0, it was more obvious. Now you have to take this extra step in Google 2.0 to look at this info box, because in the info box is oftentimes where they put the rules. Please share your recipes. Please limit three posts per day. And some of them have much stricter rules. Post once a day. Don't post links. Don't advertise yourself. Read the info of every community. Everyone is different because, again, these are not run by or endorsed or controlled by Google. They just have a platform for someone to create a community. And within this screen here, we might get the link of who created it, or who runs it, or who to contact in case there's a problem. Because Google won't, won't help you with a community, it's the people behind it. Always read the rules, follow the rules. Some can be pretty strict, some might say no cross-posting. That means that I posted something to this cooking community, and they don't want me to post the exact same thing to another community. They could check it. They could look at your profile, and they will see. He posted the same picture on two communities. Best case scenario is that the moderator sends you a message and says, please don't cross post. Okay? Another possible result could be the moderator deletes your post. Okay, now your post was taken away from 200,000 people. Worst case scenario, you get kicked out of the community. You can't post anything there. So now you've definitely lost 200,000 possible leads. And it can happen. It's happened to me one time. I was sharing on a community. I, I, um, I like to go to Comic-Con, I like to take photos of the people dressed up in those amazing costumes, and I'm in a couple of, it's called cosplay, I'm in a couple of cosplay communities, and I posted my pictures, my original pictures of people in costume, and then the tyrant of a moderator of that community deleted my posts and eventually kicked me out, because that moderator was really looking for specific kinds of costumes even though it's not, it was like an unspoken thing. He really likes certain kinds of costumes. I wasn't posting those kinds. Kick me out. I complained. Google Plus here has an official Google Help community as well. I went to the official Google Help community, and I said, and look at this. These are the pictures I posted. Here's the links. Here's the proof. Help me. They said, we can't help you. That person runs it. They can run it like a dictatorship if they want. We can't do anything about it. What's that? Who appoints the boss? Themselves. Whoever creates the community is the boss. Whoever creates it. But what can happen is one person that created the community can assign more moderators. So more people can. That particular one, it's one person managing it all. Some of these other communities have multiple people managing it. So always check always check the info box that'll tell you the rules who runs it how to contact them this one right here right away it says no spam read the rules read the info the Android community spam no advertising other communities no nudity no racism no pirated software okay follow those rules and you should be okay
one and a half million members. I don't want to get kicked out of that community. Although there is the other side of it where don't join a community that's too small, perhaps don't join a community that's too big, because then a lot of people are posting stuff and your stuff will get pushed to the side. Although I break my own rule there. I do, I am a member of a couple communities with a million, and it does work. You know, um, there's a lot of people looking at a particular community. I'm a member of this community, and uh, I post something there and it gets attention. Now, it might be a little more short-lived because there's one and a half million people vying to show content, but it does give you some traction. So always look at the rules. If you need to ask to join, make sure your content on your profile matches the style of that community for them to approve you. And once you start posting to a community, it'll also ask you to organize your content. Which of these sections should it go into? And each one is different. There might be no sections in a community. There might be five sections, there might be 20 sections. When you post something, it'll ask you, where would you like to post this post? Put it in the right place. Best case scenario, the moderator moves it for you. Worst case scenario, they delete it. Worser case scenario is that they kick you out of the community. So this is a big secret about Google+. Plus. Use communities. Join as many as you want, as many as are relevant. Read the rules. Post to them. Follow the rules. Post to the communities. And you're going to reach an audience here with zero followers much quicker. Because you're reaching directly to these people that care about a topic. And that was supposed to be the big, the big uh, point of, of Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups. Facebook groups I don't think are going anywhere. LinkedIn groups are valuable. And Google Plus groups are most valuable, I would say. They're all free to join. Of course, some of them ask you to join, but that depends on the moderators. Be on the good side of the moderators and you'll be okay. And notice at the very top, when you're, when you're in this communities screen, you have these are the ones that's recommending to me. These are the ones I am a member of or have joined. Uh, these are the ones I've joined. There's been 99 posts there. And yours, you can create your own communities. But unlike collections, I don't recommend you create your own communities. Because you then now have to be a moderator. You have to deal with the spam. You have to keep people in line to follow the rules. You have to make rules. You have to have a full-time job, unpaid, to run a community. You can appoint other community managers and help you run it. Do you trust them? Do you trust them that they won't kick you out and take over? So I don't recommend you create communities. I recommend you find communities, join relevant ones, and be active. And again, not always about the sell, 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 me, 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 about what can I, what can I give to the community. That one much be much more careful, and it's not always about sales. Read the rules of the community to see if you if you're safe. Victor, is there a like an alphabetized list of no. each community? So you'd have to just randomly go through these pictures and topics. Exactly. This, they could stand to fix this up a little bit more. There's no alphabetized list. You can search a keyword and it'll give you those with keywords, but that's still not in any order. So you'd still have to browse a bit. Because right now my screen is showing 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so when you've got, you know, 40 to look at, then it's more cumbersome, definitely. So no, there's no there's no organization. You just have to look at the thumbnail, how many members, click a link to see inside of it. I would hope that they would let you organize it in various ways, in Google 3.0 maybe, and then also a little blurb about what it is, but not at the moment. No, they don't have that, but the closest thing is that you can create these private communities, ask to join, and then I suppose you could have a link that says, please go over here to donate, and then you can get approved. That's probably violating the terms of service. But no, there aren't any paid communities to my knowledge at the moment. Yes? I'm looking at a site that's like a recipe site, and it only has 35 in here. A recipe community? One community. But he has one, no, collect, it's in the collection. Collection, okay. But he, only, but he has one point five million. 
followers. Is that because he is someone who originally shared by someone? Is he like retweeting and then once he does that, do all of the users of that person, of all the followers of that person, get added to the following? No. Um, the, whoever had it originally keeps their stats. They don't come to yours. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's built a community out of sharing great original and shared content. And remember we talked about it's okay to use other people's content. 80-20%. Uh -huh. 80% original stuff, 20% other people's stuff. Sure. I don't know his percentage, but he's shared so much stuff that yeah, he's got a million followers on his one collection. It yeah, happens. He might be parts of many communities. He might post a lot of stuff. He might have traffic over from Twitter. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So communities is the big secret, and you could do the same sorts of tactics as we said earlier. Let's say I, I'm in members. I go to families and cooking. I could post directly to this community and reach perhaps 201,000, but I could do what I said earlier in that I see who else interacted. Wellesley LASIK by Boston Laser. Okay, this one interacted here. Let's say it was a more legitimate one. Um, I can go to their profile and follow them and make it a follow back. I can interact with the interactors. I can interact with who's active. And I can do that also by finding them in communities. Let me go to this other one, social media. Okay, thanks a lot for sharing this. So combined employees CU posted this, and then Amber commented. Amber seems to be active. I might want to follow Amber if it's the related topics that we're both into. I might get a follow back. If I don't want to do the follow, related to that is I could reply to a post that has activity and then everyone in that follow in that reply chain gets a notification. Like Twitter. If I replied to a tweet that everyone was commenting on, everyone would get the notification. Victor Speaker replied to that tweet. If I post right here, what's this? 50 predictions. Okay, I want to say amazing predictions. Surely number eight will come true. Saying that, and I never read it. So I'm going to post that. And if I could post, combined employees will get a notification, and Amber will get a notification. The point of notifications is letting people know you exist. How did it go? If you build it, they will come? Well, if you build it and advertise it, they will come. So if I post that, those two accounts, those two profiles, those two pages on Google Plus got the notification. I could, at minimum, simply get a plus one, like a pat on the head, I can get a plus one for my comment, minimal. Better is that I get a follow. So all of these things that we're talking about for this network and the other networks, they all relate to each other. Question? Can you create a um, social media that reflects your certain life? Mm -hmm. What would you suggest as an ideal personal life posting that you'll combine on your social media account? Well, what is it that you want to share? Or perhaps stepping back, why do you want to share your personal, you know, your personal? Personal, meaning, if you're just going to put, say you have a jewelry business, you look at your side is all jewelry. Mm -hmm. It kind of come off like a big box company as opposed to something more sociable where where it's an actual person behind the jewelry rather than a big jewelry business? Um, that's perfectly fine. Uh, it's just that you'll, you'll have to manage your tweet, your posts and such from the voice of a person. You know, how you write these, this text and how you share the picture. So it's a little hard to explain, but the point is look at what others are doing and how are they writing. The big companies might have a very sort of detached 
way that they write, and you as a person could use, you know, friendly language contractions and smileys and such, and that's what is making you appear more like a person and maybe reaching that audience that you're looking for. So it's basically speak like your audience, communicate like your audience. So share, create collections, share to communities, interact with those that are interacting, be social on a social network, do this on a regular basis. The big companies post something new every day. The big companies post something new three times a day. I don't have enough content to share that much. I'm going to go with once a week, perfectly fine. Once a month, it's okay, but you do want to be more active as active as possible. So social media marketer, that's a job. That's a big viable profession that people have. They, they uh, individuals or a team run this for companies. There's probably a room full of people running the McDonald's social media. You know, you're in charge of Twitter today and you're in charge of Pinterest today and then tomorrow you're on, you're on Twitter duty and tomorrow you're on Pinterest duty. Or maybe three people are on Pinterest duty. For us smaller businesses, well, I have to run my company and do payroll and Twitter sure, or hire someone. But at least here, if you're getting educated on how it works, various concepts, if you do hire someone, hopefully you get someone that kind of knows what they're doing and give you the best results. And honestly, this can be a fun thing to do, reaching an audience directly. The web, as, as you know, hyperbolic as it sounds, has changed the world. This invention here has changed the world, connecting with people all over the world reaching friends, family, strangers, changing nations, um, society. So you can use it for whatever purpose you'd like, and there's the two dual aspects of all social media, I believe, the fun, the fun, frivolous, personal aspect, and the serious business aspect. And they're both legitimate. You can use Twitter for fun and family and business. You can use Google Plus for fun and family and business. Um, just takes practice for the business one because you might be used to it more as the personal one. And what we learn on this network applies to just about every other network with nuances. The big one here is communities. We'll wrap up in just a moment and when we come back next time we'll do Facebook. We'll create a Facebook business page because we need a business page just like we need a business one here. Uh, and the nuances of Facebook. I'll take... I'll show you Oh yeah, uh, also we want to know about deleting this if we don't want it, and then we'll wrap up. This one, let's say... I wish we had a special on LinkedIn. Depending on the semester, I do cover LinkedIn also. But this semester is only three weeks long instead of four, so we can't get to it because we do one mm -hmm. network per, per day. But uh, if, you know, if you don't want this after all, if you are just doing this for testing, over on the settings, there's going to be a delete profile. Let's see, settings. We moved it perhaps under these settings. Yeah. So it looks like if you go to your icon on the top right corner, you click on settings of that Google Plus page, which apparently is different than the settings on this one. You go to these settings, and the very last setting on the settings page is delete. It'll ask you to confirm a couple of things, and then it'll be gone. But if you're doing this just to test, that's how you get rid of it. Any other general questions? Okay, we'll do a little lab time until 9.30. And um, when we come back next time, we'll talk about Facebook. Uh, there's no homework in any of these classes or certificates, remember? But I'm going to give you homework. Download the app and check out Twitter and Google Plus on the app just to see how it works there. So should we um, send you another email if you want the video from this class? Or? If, uh, if you asked for the videos of this class last week, it'll be in the same link. But if you're in my other class, Send me an email about this class, and I'll send you that link. Is there I teach an SEO class. I teach a WordPress class. I teach uh, a bunch of classes. But those are during the day, right? Yeah.